All right. Um, so I think we covered this slide, but I just want to start here again, just talking about the two forms that the myosin head can be in. It can be in the high energy form, which is where it has hydrolyzed that ADP, and now it's got an ADP and that inorganic phosphate bound. Here it has a high attraction for actin, right? It really wants to bind to that actin filament. In its low energy form, it has ATP bound to it, not yet hydrolyzed, and it is in a low affinity for actin. So it doesn't want to bind to actin. Um, and so the movement of the myosin head, we're gonna to refer to that as swiveling, the swiveling of the myosin head, that is gonna rely on the hydrolysis of ATP, okay? So that's gonna be important in understanding why myosin wants to engage with actin depending on the energy form that it is in or why it doesn't want to uh, engage with actin. All right, so when we talk about the cross-bridge cycle, it's uh, similar to rowing a boat through water. So that's the analogy that we're going to use to sort of describe what's happening. And so we can consider our oar paddle, right? Your oar paddle that you're gonna use to row that water. You can compare that to the cross-bridge. So the cross-bridge would be synonymous to your oar paddle making contact with water. We're gonna consider the myosin head making contact with actin. Um, the linking of the filaments, the thick to the thin filaments, right? So that myosin head engaging with the actin is gonna be synonymous with your ore sort of touching the water. The power stroke. So the power stroke, which is when the myosin head sort of swivels or moves the thin filament towards the M line, the center of the sarcomere, this can be um, considered the movement of the oar paddle, which is sort of propelling your boat, right? So the movement of water, which is propelling your boat forward. That's a similar action as what's happening with actin. Actin is being dragged towards the M line. Now, when the thin and thick filaments detach or break contact, we can again consider that the oar paddle breaking contact from the water, right? So you're lifting your oar paddle away from that spot where you have now dragged water behind you. And so that would be the disengagement of the thick and thin filaments. The myosin head would turn back to its initial position, right? So you're bringing your ore to a new position in, in the water and then dragging it behind you again. So this is sort of an example that illustrates exactly how cross-bridge cycling is happening. It's the myosin head reaching up, making contact with actin, when it is in its high energy form, dragging actin towards the M line, and then breaking contact, going to a new spot on the actin, dragging it again. And this is happening in a cyclical process until the actin is as close to the M line as it can be, which is when the sarcomere is at its most contracted state. All right. So that exact process is what we're going to illustrate again with this. Um, uh, flow diagram. Um, and we'll talk about again what's happening with myosin and actin, but also look out for what's happening with ATP, right? What's happening with ATP depending on whether it's in its high energy form or the low energy form. So we start off um, step one here, which is the binding of myosin to actin. So this is our myosin head. It's um, engaged up towards the actin filament, and it's going to bind onto a spot. Here, it's in its high energy form. So it's got um, the phosphate and ADP bound. And so it's attracted to the actin filament. Then we have the release of that inorganic phosphate. And now we have the uh, hydrolysis of that ATP which is dragging the filament towards the M line, okay? So notice how releasing off of that inorganic phosphate is what sort of energized the next step in the process here, all right? So now we release that ADP as well, right? So we've hydrolyzed, we've moved that inorganic phosphate. The power stroke is the second phase, which is where we drag the actin towards the M line. And now the ADP is also released off. 
Here, myosin is going to enter its low energy form. So once that ADP is released off, myosin is in its low energy form, as we can see. And then now a new ATP is gonna come and bind onto that myosin head once again. And now myosin is going to be in its state where it doesn't want to engage with actin, okay? Just... Okay, um, so let's sort of just go over those steps one more time. So we've got myosin engaged with actin, release of that inorganic phosphate, the second phase, which is the power stroke, the dragging of that actin towards the M line. Now we've released the ADP. And then here we've got myosin still stuck to actin, because here it's actually still in its high energy form. This is where we get rigor from. So rigor is when myosin is in its low energy form, excuse me, not high energy, but low energy form. And then it doesn't want to release the um, actin. This is why we see rigor mortis, which is where after um, someone dies, the body is going to re remain in a contracted state. The muscles will remain contracted because of the absence of ATP. So when myosin is in its low energy form, it stays attached to actin, which means that the sarcomere stays contracted, which means that the muscle stays contracted. In order for the muscle to relax, in order for actin to be released from myosin, we need a new ATP to come in, and then it's going to turn myosin in its high energy form, which, it where, which is where it doesn't want to engage with actin. Okay, so really important to understand the transition here from the low energy, which is where it's tightly bound to actin, to a new ATP coming in, and now it is in the high energy, and then it can disengage from the actin. Now that new ATP is hydrolyzed, and it's going to result in the inorganic phosphate and ADP bound to the myosin head once again and now it will be considered in the high energy form. All right, let's see. So good question here, why doesn't it want to engage with actin in the last point? So it doesn't want to engage in, with actin here because we've bound a new ATP, right? Binding a new ATP is what is going to shift the state of uh, myosin head and make it have less affinity for the actin. So this is why those two different energy forms will tell us whether or not myosin wants to engage, has high affinity, or doesn't want to engage and has low affinity. Okay. Um, all right. Um, there are two really nice videos, summary videos that I placed there in Brightspace linked as well. Um, that kind of go over um, an animation of this process. So look at those videos um, in your downtime or during your study time to sort of get a good illustration of this process as well, apart from the images. Um, let's look at a few practice questions here. And then I'll see what questions we have. And then we'll keep going. Um, so let me launch. About 10 more seconds here.
What is the long fibrous molecule that extends over actin monomers and blocks the myosin binding site in muscles at rest? Um, most of you picked B, which is correct. So the tropomyosin is that long thread-like protein that is blocking the myosin binding sites. So someone's asking, is this only at rest? Yes. So in order for the muscle to be relaxed, the myosin binding sites are covered up, so they cannot engage actin. Um, this is the next part of the process that we're going to look at, which is the excitation contraction coupling. So when we were speaking about myosin engaging with actin, we did not talk about calcium. So calcium is what changes the state of the myosin binding site on actin because it causes tropomyosin to move away from those binding sites and expose the, uh, the spot where myosin can bind on actin. So the tropomyosin is only covering up those binding spots when the muscle is relaxed. In order for contraction to happen, those binding sites must be exposed and then myosin can, can bind. All right, so we'll talk about that coming up, but it's only gonna be at rest here. All right, great question. Um, let's do another question here. All right, 10 more seconds. What is the name for the dark striation observed under the microscope that is due to the overlap of thick and thin filaments? Um, some of you went for A, some for D. The answer here is A. So remember the only spot of overlap is the A band. This is where the actin and myosin filaments are actually crossing over each other. And so there's a darker staining pattern in that band. Um, and it's the only spot that doesn't change with the shortening of the sarcomere as well, right? The A band. All right. What does calcium do to help the muscle contract? Um, most of you said B, some said D as well. So B is binds to troponin, exposing myosin binding sites. Um, so this is correct. Remember, calcium is what helps to regulate this cross bridge cycling, regulate this, turn it on and off. And so it's going to bind to troponin. Remember, troponin had three different spots one to bind to actin, one to bind tropomyosin, and one to bind the calcium. The one that binds the calcium is what causes a configurational change in the entire troponin and then causes the myosin to be dragged 
tropomyosin to be dragged from the myosin binding sites? So the answer is B here. Um, others of you went with D, triggers the action potential by binding to the postsynaptic receptors. Um, so no, it doesn't trigger the action potential. We'll talk about this coming up, but sodium and potassium by way of the receptors there is what causes um, that action potential. So an action potential here is no different from the action potential that is triggered on other cells, neurons, for example. Okay, um, let's go on. Okay, let's look at one more. All right, five more seconds. All right. So when does myosin have a high affinity for the actin monomer on the thin filament? So this is going to, uh, most of you went with C. Um, C is, when a new ATP enters the ATPA site on the myosin head, um, and then a few of you went with A in its energized form. So this is in its energized form. So remember, the myosin head is going to be in its highly energized form or the high affinity form, which is where it wants to engage with actin when it is bound to ADP and the inorganic phosphate, okay? And so that is when it's going to want to engage with actin. Just after the power stroke, it's going to have a new ATP come in. And when ATP is bound, it's going to be in its low energy form, and it's going to have a low affinity for actin. Um, same thing, when a new ATP, which is option C, it's going to be in the low energy form. It's going to have low affinity or attraction. Um, and then after the ADP is released, it's not going to be in its high energy form just yet. Um, it's going to require the release of that ADP and then a new ATP must come in in order for it to go back to that low energy form, all right? So the high affinity is gonna be high energy where it has ADP and the phosphate bound. The low affinity or low energy form is when it has the ATP bound. 